Parade the colors. sung by musician first class Dan Smith for the Navy Band Northeast. Please join him in singing the United States National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we wash were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting.
Chaplain Jamie Stahl Ryan, Naval Sta Station Chaplain, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. From ancient scripture, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge. In the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Merciful God in heaven, we ask your presence with us today. Graduation marks a milestone in the life of each one being recognized for their many months of hard work and perseverance. These students have been stretched, challenged, and tested. Thank you for their diligence and success. As a result of their time here, may they better be equipped to lead, serving their nations, and benefiting others. Thank you for their instructors and mentors, as well as their family and friends who have encouraged them along the way. Now please be with those being recognized today for their achievement and bless them in their endeavors. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Can all military members please uncover at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present Rear Admiral Howe, 55th President of the United States Naval War College. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> what a great day to be under the big top here on Dewey Field. Celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates, the class of 2016, of the United States Naval War College. Yeah, what a great location, too. Here on the banks of the historic Narragansett Bay, what can truly be called the cradle of the United States Navy. And for more than 250 years, U.S. ships of war have sailed these seas from John Paul Jones when he was the skipper of the colonial sloop Providence to the most modern Aegis destroyers and our littoral combat ships today. And it's against this backdrop that we gather for this time-honored tradition. Graduations are always festive and colorful events. And today we combine the, the beautiful and the meaningful academic robes of our world-class faculty with the polished brass and starched collars of the uniforms of the United States military and the uniforms of our allies and partners. And nearby, over on Colbert Plaza, you can see the national flags of our partners flying alongside the Stars and Stripes. This long line of national colors it's a powerful reminder of the friendships that have been built here in Newport. Friendships that will help maintain peace and security in the challenging years ahead. So today our students are joining a long line of distinguished Naval War College graduates that extends back 131 years. Graduates that include the names like Chester Nimitz, Bull Halsey, Ray Spruance. Through their dedicated efforts and hard work, our students have refined their critical thinking skills and grown as members of the profession of arms. I have no doubt that historians will someday look back on this class and find in it men and women that will fight bravely, lead with honor, and make the world a better place. But this intellectual and this professional development, it didn't result solely through the efforts of the students. It was also the result of the efforts of our brilliant and committed faculty and the supporting staff. With me on the stage today are the leaders of this great team, and I'd like to introduce them one by one. Please hold your applause until I've got them all standing. First, Professor Walt Wildeman, the director of our College of Distance Education.
Captain Richard Twig LeBranch, the chairman of our Joint Military Operations Department. Dr. Michael Pakovic, the chairman of our Strategy and Policy Department. Dr. David Cooper, the chairman of our National Security Affairs Department. Dean Tom Kalora, Dean of the Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Dean Thomas Mangold, the Dean of our International Programs. Dean Jamie Kelly, Dean of our College of Operational and Strategic Leadership. Dr. Phil Hahn, Dean of Academics. And Dr. Lewis Duncan, our distinguished provost. So please join me in a round of applause for the outstanding contributions of the faculty that they represent. Let me call your attention to the chair draped in black to my left. This chair represents the recently departed member of our faculty, Dr. Eric Shaw, who passed away unexpectedly this last March. A retired Coast Guard captain, he was held in the highest regard by his colleagues, by his students, and by his friends. He is missed. We are honored to have a number of particularly distinguished guests with us this morning. Congressman Steve Israel, about whom I'll have a, a few more comments in just a couple of minutes. Admiral Guillermo Barrera, Colombian Navy retired, former Chief of Navy of the Colombian Navy, and one of our CNO International Fellows on the faculty. Admiral Nirmal Verma, Indian Navy retired, former Chief of Staff of the Indian Navy, who also currently serves on our faculty as a CNO International Fellow. Admiral Harold Gaiman, United States Navy retired, former Commander in Chief of the U.S. Joint Forces Command and the Vice Chief of Naval Operations. General Arthur Lichty, United States Air Force retired, former Commander of the Air Mobility Command. And Lieutenant General Todd D. Walters, United States Air Force, Director of Operations on the Joint Staff today. Ambassador Mittendorf, a former Secretary of the Navy and a former Ambassador for the United States to the Netherlands and to the Organization of American States. Brigadier General Bennett Singer, the Land Component Commander for the Rhode Island National Guard. And Ann Joslin, the great grand niece of Admiral Stephen B. Luce, our beloved founder who founded this college in 1884. Now with them, we're extremely pleased to have additional flag officers, general officers, NDS with us, as well as over two dozen naval and defense attaches, many of them who traveled from Washington, D.C. to be with their graduates today. We've also got in the audience a number of the commanding officers from the tenant commands of Naval Station Newport to include the commanding officer of the base itself, Captain Dennis Boyer, who's responsible for Dewey Field, the great venue that we've got to host our graduation ceremony. Let me also acknowledge Mr. Joe Roxy, who is the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Naval War College Foundation. To Chairman Roxy and to all the members of the foundation, thank you for all you do to the college all year long across all of our efforts. To the family and friends of our graduates, I'll have a few words for you in a, a few more words in a few minutes. But thanks for being here. Uh, your support underpins certainly the success that we celebrate today. And then finally, the true focus of this ceremony, our students. Our students who are about to return to positions of increased responsibility across our government, across our military, at headquarters, and leading troops in combat. Now we refer to this ceremony as the Naval War College graduation, but it is in fact the graduation for five separate colleges. 
Today we will graduate 183 graduates from the Nimitz course, which is taught by our College of Naval Warfare and our Naval Command College. 251 students from the Spruance course, taught by the College of Naval Command and Staff and by the Naval Staff College. And 1,172 students from our College of Distance Ed Education. Now most of them couldn't be here, which is kind of good because we'd probably be here all afternoon. But they are certainly here in spirit and we honor their presence. And when you add up the 153 students that graduated off cycle last November and then in this March, a total of 1,759 students will be graduating from the college as the class of 2016, the largest class in the college's 132 year history. That's right. Now I'd say that this growth, it, it represents directly the understanding and the increased importance of education and developing leaders for the challenges of the complex and dynamic world that they are and will continue to serve in. I'd offer that we will not train our way to success in this environment. Training will always remain an essential component of leader development, but it's only through education, only through professional military education that we will be able to build the critical thinking skills that are essential and necessary for effective military operations in such a complex and challenging environment. And with that thought in mind, we are extremely pleased to have a champion of professional military education, Congressman Steve Israel, as our guest speaker today. As mentioned before, Congressman Israel represents New York's third district. He's the sixth ranking member of the House Democratic leadership and as so he serves as the chair of the policy and communication, consistently focusing on the issues of middle class economics and economic security and opportunity. Former President Bill Clinton once remarked on Comet Israel as one of the most thoughtful leaders in the House of Representatives. He is a relentless advocate for the men and women in uniform. He's visited U.S. troops in conflict over his career on nine separate occasions to include visits to remote fire bases in Afghanistan. And he has worked throughout his time on the House Armed Services Committee to increase the military's commitment to professional military education and to the continued development of military service members and leaders across the armed forces. He's clearly one of the most knowledgeable and passionate members of Congress when it comes to supporting the needs of America's warriors and their family. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Congressman Steve Israel. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Admiral Howe for everything he does, for his leadership, his passion for the intellectual rigor of our military and our Navy. Admiral, I appreciate you sharing President Clinton's remarks about me. You heard what the Admiral said. President Clinton once called me one of the most thoughtful members of the United States Congress. Have you been watching the United States Congress? <laughs> this is not exactly high praise, uh, Admiral. <laughs> And uh, I, it's, uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to congratulate uh, all of the graduates. Let's hear it for the graduates, uh, their families, the faculty here at the United States Naval War College. It is uh, a, a, a deep and, and great honor uh, to address you. However, I'm going to be brief, uh, and here's why. I represent a congressional district in New York on Long Island, just to actually, just across the Long Island Sound. And if you're a politician in New York, you need to figure out how to speak quickly and move fast. That's what we do in New York. We talk fast, we move fast. 
And I learned that lesson very early on. Uh, I made a decision when I was elected to the Congress back in the year 2000 that I would try and visit a school as often as I could because everything I need to know and understand about federal policy on education, I do not learn by listening to an assistant deputy secretary of education testify. I do not learn about education by reading a legislative memo from my staff. I learn about education by visiting schools. And I went to a school right on the Long Island Sound called the Norwood Avenue Elementary School. And I addressed a fourth grade assembly, which is kind of like addressing the United States Congress at times. And I gave what I thought was a pretty good speech until about three weeks later when I was sitting at my desk in Washington on Capitol Hill and a manila folder crossed my desk filled Admiral with thank you notes from those fourth graders at the Norwood Avenue Elementary School. And I was reading through those notes and there was one that I loved so much that I saved it and I framed it and I think about it before every major speech. This is what it said, absolutely true, no embellishment, no exaggeration. This is what this letter said in that fourth grade penmanship that some of you may remember. It said, dear Mr. Israel, thank you for coming to my school, thank you for coming to Norwood Avenue, thank you for talking to my class, thank you for talking to my teachers, thank you for talking about your job, thank you for talking about Washington. Thank you for teaching us about the House and the Senate. Thank you for teaching us about the White House. Thank you for inviting me to the White House. My mother said I can't go. <laughs> Thank you for telling us about the environment. Thank you for telling us to support our veterans. Thank you very much. You were very interesting. I hope you'll come back one day soon. Sincerely yours, your pal Jeffrey. P.S. You spoke so long, you made us miss recess. <laughs> so, so, I learned early. So, no more than 15 minutes, which is light years in congressional time. Uh, I want to explore what kind of world those fourth graders are going to grow up in. You know, uh, our mission, your mission and mine, is to keep those fourth graders safe. That's what we do for a living. We keep them safe. You and I took an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America that we would secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, which is those fourth graders at the Norwood Avenue Elementary School, to protect them in a world of challenge, to offer a future of stability and opportunity and freedom. And I want to share with you exactly what kind of world they are going to grow up in and what kind of strategic and critical security environment you all will be operating in, because we actually know the answers. Three nights ago, I convened a dinner in Congress with the leadership of the National Intelligence Council, the NIC. The NIC, as many of you know, is the aggregate of our intelligence agencies across a broad spectrum. Every four years, the National Intelligence Council presents a report to the president-elect on what the world is going to look like in the next 15 or 20 years. And so in December, the people who were at the dinner that I convened will sit with the president-elect and paint a picture for that president on what kind of security environment will be operating in 2035. The last NIC report called Alternative Worlds was presented to President Obama when he prepared for his second term. And it doesn't predict the future, ladies and gentlemen, but boy, does it project the future. And I want to share with you five major trends that the last report projects for the year 2030 for those fourth graders. Number one, and I want you to think about what this means for you. What kind of environment you'll be operating in as I take you through this. Because every trend is a good news, bad news scenario. So number one, we're going to add 1.2 billion people to the population of the earth between now and the year 2030. Good news, the majority of those people will be living comfortably and securely and stably in the middle class. Bad news is that middle class growth is expected to occur in Brazil and India and China and other countries. Our middle class here in the United States may be in decline. Number two, we're about to see something unprecedented in the span of human history. The largest growth of the elderly in all of humankind. Good news, medical technologies will keep us alive much longer than anybody thought possible. 
Bad news is there is no way that Social Security and Medicare, that public pensions and private pensions in the United States or anywhere in the world can sustain that population. Third takeaway, we're going back to an era of city-states. This morning when we woke up, half the planet woke up in a city. In the year 2030, when those fourth graders at the Norwood Avenue Elementary School wake up, when your children and grandchildren wake up, 60% of the world population will awake in a city. Good news, if we do this right, cities can become dynamic, thriving, creative areas. Bad news, if we do this wrong, we will have mega slums spreading across the globe and rampant poverty and no infrastructure. Fourth takeaway, technology is proceeding faster than we ever thought possible. So in the year 2030, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be like an Etch-a-Sketch. I'm showing my age. Nobody will even know what this did in the year 2030. This morning, a million robots in the world made something. By the year 2030, mostly everything that's made will be made by robots or 3D printers. Good news, cost of manufacturing will plummet. Entry into marketplaces will skyrocket. Bad news, if we don't need people to make things, what will we do with all that human capital and labor? And the final takeaway is massive scarcity of resources. 35% increase in demand for food, 40% increase in demand for water, 50% increase in demand for energy. You all know this, if you talk about mili to military planners about future strategies, it's about three things, food, water, and energy. Good news is the United States will be the world's leading exporter of energy across a broad range of technologies. Bad news, there will be an implosion of, of crude oil economies meaning rampant instability and chaos in crude countries, crude oil countries. Now, everything was good news, bad news. Only four times before in our history have we been entering such a profound pivot where the decisions made by one generation will so dramatically and profoundly impact the very next generation. People think the Industrial Revolution was a revolution. No, it took hundreds of years. People think the Renaissance just happened. No, it took hundreds of years. We're in one of those pivots where it will take 15, 20 years. This happened in 1815 when the United States established it was not a fly-by-night uh, operation. It happened in 1919 when the United States established it was one of several world powers. It happened in the 1940s when the United States established it was a superpower and it happened again in the 1980s when the United States established that it was the superpower. And it's going to happen again. These are tectonic, game-changing megatrends, which leads me to my second point. Those are major trends, but I want to share with you two minor pivots in naval history that nobody realized at the time would fundamentally reshape the world. And then I'm going to connect that to the importance of what you've learned here. I will never pretend to be the smartest member of the House of Representatives, although as I said before, the competition ain't exactly that stiff. But I know my military history. I am the most passionate student of military history. And I want to share with you two pivots that impacted the whole world. The first occurred in the early 1900s, and I know many of you know this. It's when the first Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, made a decision that the Royal Navy would convert from coal to oil. Now this is exceedingly controversial. Britain had domestic coal, now it was going to have to extend and expand its reach for petroleum to propel its ships. The ships would have to be redesigned. Older vessels would have to be reconfigured. But Churchill knew that that pivot from coal to oil would increase speed and range. What happened? British Navy converts. By the end of World War I, every major navy converts to oil. Petroleum becomes, quote, an essential element in the strategy of nations, according to Dan Jurgen, who wrote the best book I've ever read about oil called The Prize. The struggle for oil reaches this backwater area of the planet called Mesopotamia. The Middle East is completely reshaped. And 100 years later, that one pivot by Winston Churchill has reshaped the world, reshaped strategy, doctrine, tactics, technology, and the United States Navy. I'll give you the second naval pivot. 
just, wrote, uh, just read a, a, a great book by Eric Larson called Dead Wake, The Last Crossing of the Lusitania. And uh, in the book, he talks about this little pivot by the German high command. One day, the German high command says to U-boat commanders, you see a ship and you want to sink it, go ahead, shoot at will. You don't need to check with us. Just do it. We are empowering our U-boat commanders to take it into their own responsibility and authority to sink ships without permission, approval, or authority. May 7th, 1915, the commander of the U-boat 20 is returning from patrol. Commander Schweiger spots the Lusitania. At 1.30, he fires. The Lusitania sinks. Americans die. American public opinion erupts. Woodrow Wilson, who didn't want to enter the war, now politically must enter the war. U.S. troops are committed. World War I is won. The Treaty of Versailles is signed in 1919, establishing the U.S. as a major power. I will remind you that the National Intelligence Council report said that 1919 was one of those dramatic moments of change. So that one little pivot led to a dramatic moment. Now, what's the connection between Winston Churchill and the Lusitania and the National Intelligence Council? Here's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. As fast as technology goes, as far as our ships can reach, as precise as our weapons get, one thing is constant. The unpredictable will happen. The unexpected will occur. And the one weapon that we have always had to guide us through megatrends and tectonic shifts and game changers is the human mind. That's the one weapon that has always guided us best. Our ability to adapt and innovate and improvise based on the timeless lessons of humanity. Which is why our nation's leaders, our military leaders, we have to learn to keep learning. We have to reward professional military education. We have to include learning in our operations tempo. We have to value critical thinking and linguistics and cultural awareness and regional affairs. I'm a member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense. The debate on that subcommittee is always about the hardware that we are investing in. I was a member of the House Armed Services Committee. The debate on the HASC was always about the hardware that we must invest in. The debate has to be about the software that we invest in, how we teach, how we learn. And I'll give you two examples of what I saw firsthand and then wrap up. The first occurred in 2004. It was my first CODEL, congressional delegation, to Iraq. Now, I know we have a joint service, but this example is about the Army, but I'm going to give you a Navy example uh, afterwards. I was at uh, 4th uh, Infantry Division uh, headquarters in Balad. And I was with General Ray Odierno. We were on a Black Hawk helicopter. And I was doing what a good politician does. I was making conversation with the general. And so I said to the general, sir, tell me what a day is like here in the Sunni Triangle. And he looked, and what do you need to be successful? And he looked at me and he said, well, Congressman, you know, I begin my day speaking at a school assembly, like the Norwood Avenue Elementary School. He said, I'm trying to stand up PTAs all across the Sunni Triangle. He said, and then I will go to a water treatment plant because that we're trying to renovate because you cannot have safety without safe drinking water. Then I will address a Chamber of Commerce meeting and give out small grants for small businesses because you cannot have security without small businesses. Then I'll come back to the fourth ID and meet with two rival sheikhs and see if I can referee their dispute. He said, what do I need? I need more cultural anthropologists. I need more strategists. I need more linguists. General Odierno, who has given me permission to tell this story, was trained as a war fighter. But in the Sunni Triangle, he was the mayor. He was the mediator. He was the moderator. He was the nation builder. Now fast forward to my second example. From 2004 to last April, 2016, I was back in Iraq. And I was in Haditha, which was under tremendous pressure by ISIS. And uh, we were asked to meet with two Sunni tribal leaders. And we were sitting in a room with these Sunni leaders. And I noticed that there was a young Navy SEAL sitting with us. That Navy SEAL brought those leaders to the table. 
He was the United States of America's liaison to their tribes. And I saw the trust that these tribal leaders had in him. They kept looking at him. And so towards the end of the meeting, because I'm so interested in how we educate our personnel, I took him aside. I said, Lieutenant, what kind of language training did you have for this? He said, sir, none. I said, well, what kind of cultural expertise do you have? He said, very little. And I'll be honest with you, I was concerned, but then I realized something. He was doing fine. He was innovating, he was improvising, he was learning, he was using his intelligence and adaptability in an uncertain environment. Now his example may be different from what you as, future, as strategists will deal with in the future, but the skills are the same. Critical thinking, strategic forethought, adaptability. The ability to analyze vast amounts of uh, information in unexpected environments and formulate viable solutions in that complexity. That's what he was about. That is why PME is so vital, and that is why the Naval War College is so indispensable. Which leads me to my very final point. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I, looking at you, touring this base with uh, the Admiral, reflecting on the history of this place as we just did in the museum, I couldn't be more confident and optimistic that we're going to get it right. That we're going to secure the blessings of liberty for those fourth graders at the Norwood Avenue Elementary School. It is true we are surrounded by extraordinary challenge, great and grave. And there's a perception that I hear, maybe it's just my community, but I often hear, oh, Congressman, things have never been so bad. Things have never been more dangerous. The world has never been so dark. With all the respect in the world, wrong, wrong. Two weeks ago, I uh, was at a veterans post in Huntington Station, New York, with a gentleman named Ernest Rosa, immigrated to the United States from Italy in the earliest part of the century, enlists after FDR summons him to fight for his country, fights in Germany, fights in France, fights through uh, the German lines in the Vosges Mountains, held a defensive position in the Battle of the Bulge came home, and 70 years later, I pinned his, medal on his, his medals on his chest. When Ernest Rosa went to fight for his country, his country was in a position of arguable military inferiority versus Germany and Japan. And his community, the area that I represent, we were nothing but potato fields and pumpkin farms. And then we became the defense capital of America, or at least we think we did. How did we do it? We researched, we developed, we organized, we mobilized, we engineered, we assembled, we stormed beaches, we leapt hills, we freed France, we liberated concentration camps, we rescued Europe, we went to the Pacific, we secured the Pacific, and then we looked across the black expanse of outer space at the moon and we said, we can go there too, and we did it. On October 4th, 1957, we had a dark and terrifying moment. At 7.15 p.m., the American people turned on the Huntley Brinkley Report, just before Leave it to Beaver premiered on national television. And you know what they heard? They could literally hear the staccato beeping of Sputnik. The Soviets had beat us at our own game. They beat us in the space race, in science, and math, and engineering, and technology. And five years later, President Kennedy goes to, not the Congress, not even the military, he goes to a university, Rice University in Texas, and says to the American people on September 12, 1962, by the end of the decade, we will land man on the moon. Now, people remember that, but they forget what else he said. And I want you to remember what else he said as you continue your careers. He said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they're easy, but because they are hard because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. To get to the moon, we passed the National Defense Education Act. We valued STEM in our schools. We passed student loan programs so that college was affordable. We taught foreign languages. We realized we could never win the space race if we were just too busy to learn. Today's challenge, ladies and gentlemen, is not to go to the moon. It's to protect those fourth graders on dark nights during dark times, to learn the lessons of history,
to organize and measure the best of our intellectual skills with the innovation of Churchill, the resourcefulness of that young Navy SEAL in Haditha, the strategic thinking of a captain and commander on a riverine boat in the Persian Gulf trying to figure out what to do when the Iranian Navy is swarming against him or her. And if we do those things, if we mobilize the best of our intellectual capacities, if we value the Naval War College, if we invest in that software, I am convinced that the most dangerous thing that those fourth graders of the Norwood Avenue Elementary School will face, the biggest threat in their lives in the year 2030, will be a congressman who just speaks too long. God bless the United States Navy. God bless our military. God bless our veterans. God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Israel. Academic awards will now be presented to selected students who have distinguished themselves by their academic achievement. In some instances, there are individuals receiving honorable mention for their work and they will have their names read aloud. Individuals receiving an honorable mention will stand and be recognized in their place. The first place awardees will then be announced and invited to the stage for formal recognition. The Robert E. Bateman's International Prize is presented for the best paper submitted by a Naval Command College student on a topic relating to a force planning or strategic issues of maritime interest. The cash prize is provided by the Naval War College Foundation through the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Robert E. Bateman. Mrs. Hope A. Van Buren, Naval War College Foundation trustee, will present this award. I will first announce the individuals receiving honorable mention and then announce the first place awardee and invite that person to join them on stage. Honorable mention goes to Captain Chaitanya Calais, Indian Navy, Naval Command College, and Commander Augustin Pajaro Marquez, Chilean Navy, Naval Command College. The Robert E. Bateman's International Prize first prize goes to C Captain Liviu Kaman, Romania Naval Force, Naval Command College for the SAUS Strategic Movement in the Black Sea, an innovative partnership to circumvent Montreux Convention. For every resident student present here today, there are eight other students located around the globe engaged in the Naval War College's College of Distance Education programs. This year, there are 1,172 graduates of the College of Distance Education, of whom 117 are here with us here today. Distance education is a unique challenge in that the student completes his or her education <clears throat> while engaged in their full-time day job, thus requiring special initiative and dedication. It is with a profound sense of camaraderie and appreciation for their efforts that we salute our distance education students. The McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Education is sponsored by Captain D. Robert McGinnis, United States Navy Reserve, retired, a Naval War College Foundation trustee. A cash award it recognizes the Fleet Seminar Program graduate of the College of Distance Education who displays superior standards of academic 
performance, professionalism, and community service. Mr. John E. Odegaard, Executive Director of Naval War College Foundation, will present the award. The winner of the McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Education is Lieutenant Commander John J. Battisti, Jr., Judge Advocate Gen General Corps, United States Navy, College of Distance Education. The Zimmerman Gray International Essay Award is awarded to the best of all papers submitted by a student in the Naval Staff College. Selection is made by the President at Naval War College based on the recommendations of a prize essay committee. The award consists of a perpetual plaque displayed at the Naval War College bearing the winner's name. Recipients of the award are also given an inscribed certificate documenting their accomplishments along with the cash prize provided to the generous generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Gilson Gray and the Naval War College Foundation. The award is named in honor of their fathers, Commander Donner, Donald Zimmerman, United States Navy, and Commander Gilson B. Gray, Jr., United States Navy, both career naval aviators who saw combat during World War II. Ms. Catherine Gray will present the award. Honorable mention goes to Major Edwin Chen, Republic of Singapore Navy, Naval Staff College, and, and Lieutenant Commander Eric Pony, Israeli Navy, Naval Staff College. The Zimmerman Gray International Award First Prize is awarded to Lieutenant Commander Abhishek Yadav, Indian Navy, Naval Staff College for the essay in Enhancing U.S. Security Collaboration with India and its Strategic Implications. Each year, the Navy League of the United States presents two awards, one to a graduate of the College of Naval Warfare and one to the graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff. These awards are given in memory of Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce and Admiral William S. Sims, respectively. Admiral Luce was the first president of the Naval War College and Admiral Sims was the president of the Naval War College at two points in his career. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of armed government service in the public interest. Mr. Thomas, Thomas Feeney, President of the Navy League of the United States Newport County Council, will present the awards. The Stephen B. Luce Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Warfare is presented to Lieutenant Commander Edward, Edward A. McClellan III, United States Navy.
the William S. Sims Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the, Com of the College of Naval Command and Staff is presented to Major Paul A. Lushenko, United States Army. Who said that? Please join us in congratulating these award winners for their outstanding efforts and the performance and to show their appreciation to the sponsors of the awards for their continued generosity to the United States Naval War College. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the presentation of graduates. Red Mohal, please move to the podium. Captain Derek Westman, United States Navy Director, of Naval Command College, will present the Naval Command College. Naval Command College, please rise. Admiral Howe. I have the honor to present the Naval Command College Class of 2016 candidates for the United States Naval War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma with all rights and privileges thereto. Naval Command College, please be seated. College of Naval Warfare, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Naval Warfare Class of 2016, candidates for the Masters of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy, and the accreditation of the New England Associations of Schools and Colleges, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. Congratulations. College of Naval Warfare, please be seated. Captain Mark Turner, United States Navy, Director, Naval Staff College will present the Naval Staff College. Naval Staff College, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the Naval Staff College Class of 2016 candidates for the United States Naval War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma and all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Naval Staff College, Class of 2016, please be seated. College of Naval Command and Staff, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Naval Command and Staff, Class of 2016, candidates for the Master of Arts in Defense and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy, and the accreditation of the New England Association of School and Colleges, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Defense and Strategic Studies. Congratulations. <laughs> College of Naval Command and Staff, please be seated. Professor Tim Gerrell, Deputy Director, College of Distance Education, will present the College of Distance Education. 
Master's degree candidates of the College of Distance Education, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Distance Education Class of 2016, candidates for the Master of Arts in Defense and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And by the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy and the accreditation of the Association of New England Schools and Colleges, I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Defense and Strategic Studies. Congratulations. Master's degree candidates of the College of Distance Education, please be seated. <laughs> Diploma candidates of the College of Distance Education, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Distance Education Class of 2016 candidates for the United States Naval War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Diploma candidates of the College of Distance Education, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with your applause to congratulate once again all of the graduates of the Naval War College, class of 2016, and their families. Well done. The graduates will now receive their diplomas. Beyond the requirements for graduation, Certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction is presented to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is presented to the next 15% of each graduating class. Graduates will proceed to the stage as their name is read. Please hold your applause until all names have been read so that the names and recognitions may be heard. From the Naval Command College. Lieutenant Colonel Rashi Kamisi, Algerian Naval Forces. Mr. Adrian Eldendorf, Defense Logistics Agency. Commander Ashley M. Papp, Royal Australian Navy. Commander Karen L. Alexander, Medical Service Corps. Captain Mohammed Humayun Kabir, Bangladesh Navy. Captain Bradley A. Appleman, United States Navy, Judge Advocate General of Corps, with distinction. Commander Ahuya Egbison Regis Leonce, Benin Armed Forces. Colonel Eric E. Oslaxon, U.S. Army. Captain Ricardo Pereira da Silva, Brazilian Navy. Commander Aaron K. Ayers, United States Navy, Supply Corps. Captain Vanyo Ivanov Muzinski, Bulgarian Navy. Colonel Philip C. Baker, United States Army. 
Captain Stephen Thornton, Royal Canadian Navy. Lieutenant Commander Justin D. Bands, United States Navy, with distinction. Commander Augustin Pajaro Marquez, Chilean Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel John E. Beckett, United States Air Force. Commander Jose Manuel Gomez Torres, Colombian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Charles J. Basham, United States Marine Corps. Captain Tamer Wahid Mohammed Mahdi Amr, Egyptian Naval Forces. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel John Patrick Beale, United States Army. Commander Yuri Saska, Estonian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Sean B. Beltran, United States Marine Corps. Commander Mathieu Delafoy, French Navy. Ms. Kelly L. Bennett, U.S. Government, with high distinction. Commander Volker Blache, German Navy. Commander Daniel S. Benz, United States Navy, with high distinction. Captain Issa Adam Yakubu, Ghana Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gloria A. Berlanga, United States Army. Commander Georgios Trikolos, Hellenic Navy. Mr. Robert J. Betker, Department of Homeland Security. Captain Chaitanya Dilip Kale, Indian Navy. Mr. Kurt William Burkhan, Maritime Administration. Captain Agung Mohammed Kansana, Satyawan Poetra, Indonesian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Nathan J. Bollinger, United States Army. Commander Adam Sarig, Israel Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Borgel, United States Army Reserve. Captain Hitoshi Shimizu, Japan, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Branson, United States Air Force, with high distinction. Colonel Ahmad Mahmoud Mohammed Al Hazaima, Royal Jordanian Naval Forces. Commander Francis Patrick Brown, United States Navy. Commander Hyungjun Kim, Republic of Korea, Navy. <laughs> Commander Robert C. Kadena, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Hussein Alajmi, Kuwait Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel John J. Campo, Air National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Ahmad Adelbi, Lebanese Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Tomas Carlos, United States Marine Corps. Commander Jamsari bin Tahir, Royal Malaysian Navy. Commander Samchan Chan Kuban, United States Navy, Civil Engineering Corps. Captain Cesar Gustavo Ramirez Taralba, Secretaria de Marina, Armada de Mexico. Commander Randolph Chestang IV, United States Navy. Commander Mohammed Romley, Royal Moroccan Navy. Colonel Timothy W. Childress, United States Air Force, with distinction. Commander Hendrik Rodolphus Johannes Rejenga, Royal Netherlands Navy. Commander Mark A. Close, United States Navy. Commander Shane Arndell, Royal New Zealand Navy. <laughs> Commander Joseph D. Crawford, United States Navy. Captain Samson Jaglaba Bora, Nigerian Navy. <laughs> Colonel Marlon E. Crook, Sr., Air National Guard. Commander, Senior Grade, Connie Stein, Royal Norwegian Navy. <laughs> Colonel Mason W. Crow, United States Army. Captain Salim Saif Masood Almazini, Royal Navy of Oman. 
Ms. Teresa R. Crowning Shield, Department of State. Captain Abdul Munib, Pakistan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Justin D. DeMarco, United States Air Force. Commander Manuel Enrique Fashin Mestanza, Peruvian Navy. Colonel Jason Scott Denny, United States Army. Captain Raul Abanitaya Regis, Philippine Navy. Commander Greta Spitz Dinsham, United States Navy. Captain Richard Grudzinski, Polish Navy. Mr. Mark A. Deutsch, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Captain Aras Liviu Coman, Romanian Naval Forces. Commander Andrew R. Dittmer, United States Navy. Commander Nawaf Abdul Aziz Albidawi, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Colonel Lynn E. Downey, United States Army. Commander Malik Indaye, Senegalese Navy. Commander Jeremy Lee During, United States Navy. Captain Jabalani Amos Mbotho, South African Navy. Colonel Brent D. Flaxbart, United States Army National Guard. Captain Manuel Aguirre Alderegua, Spanish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jack W. Flint III, United States Air Force. Commander Anna Karen Broth, Swedish Royal Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Joss Gulerter, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Captain Chi Hao Lin, Taiwan Navy. Colonel Stacy L. Gerber, United States Army. Commander Ralph Lauda, Tunisian Navy. Colonel Jason Gingrich, United States Air Force. Captain Hassan Ozyurk, Turkish Naval Forces Command. Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Christopher Gregoire, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Colonel Mohammed Aldelaziz Alkas Al Ali, UAE Armed Forces. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Gary A. Grubb, United States Army. Commander Adrian Clifford Fryer, Royal Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Paul Burton Gunnison, United States Army with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Thad R. Middleton, United States Air Force. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, Department of State, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin S. Ringvelsky, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Robert Johnson Hamilton, United States Navy. Commander Joseph P. Thompson III, United States Navy. Colonel Peter Hart, United States Army, with high distinction. From the Naval Staff College, Lieutenant Zorji Baba, Angolian Navy. Lieutenant Commander John D. Heverin, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Nesser Ahmed, Bangladesh Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel A. Holland, United States Army, with high distinction. Lieutenant Canio Fadikpe, Benin Naval Forces. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel J. M. Holterman, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Commander Leonardo Viana, Brazilian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Abraham L. Jackson, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Wacho Ivanov, Bulgarian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Thaddeus J. Janicki, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Armino de Gracia, Cabo Verde, Coast Guard. Ms. Beth A. Jewell, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Commander Theo Quan Chu, Cameroon Navy. Mr. Ellen H. Johnson, 
Office of Director of National Intelligence. Commander Andrew McKenzie, Royal Canadian Navy. Mr. Borden Johnson, Office of Director of National Intelligence. Lieutenant Commander Camilo Franco, Colombian Navy. Commander Joseph Paul Johnson, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Lionel Gacoso, Congolese National Navy. Commander Lawrence W. Kempista, United States Navy. Lieutenant Johnson Aku, Cote d'Ivoire Navy. Lieutenant Commander Brian Curtis Kesselring, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Demir Bulic, Croatian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen P. Kaisner, United States Army Reserve. Commander Thomas Belso, Royal Danish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory C. Knight, United States Army National Guard. Commander Brian Vilshoy, Royal Danish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Kyle M. Koverik, Air National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Ahmed L. Barbary, Egyptian Navy. Commander James T. Crone, Jr., United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jairo Hidalgo, Salvadoran Navy. Commander Andrew Liggett, United States Navy. Lieutenant J.G. Elizar Lamote, Haitian Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Micah Charles Lasgaris, United States Navy. Lieutenant J.G. Wilfred Michau, Haitian Coast Guard. Commander Charles L. Luff, United States Navy, Chaplain Corps. Commandant Ju Junior Grade Parag Goswami, Indian Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Abhishek Yadov, Indian A. Navy. McGill Lieutenant Ray. Colonel James Medical C. Corps. Mock, Jr., United States Air Force. Major Yudi Ardian, Indonesian Navy. Mr. Michael J. Marr, U.S. Government. Major Kaniawan Atmoja, Indonesian Navy. Mr. Wayne J. Martin, Jr., National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, with distinction. Major John David Sundock, Indonesian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Edward, Edward Alden McClellan III, United States Navy, with high distinction. Major Lucky Wu Wung, Indonesian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel John L. Medeiros, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Commander Hytham Ahmed, Iraqi Navy. Colonel William Mingle, United States Army, with distinction. Staff Commander Faras Al Mohammed, Iraqi Navy. <laughs> Colonel Joshua L. Moon, United States Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Eric Pony. Israeli Navy. Colonel Brian M. Moore, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Ko Kubota, Japanese Maritime Self Defense Force. <laughs> Colonel Thomas Glenn Moore, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Tadashi Matsuda, Japanese Maritime Defense Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Kobe M. Moran. United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Ibrahim Al Othman, Jordanian Army. Lieutenant Colonel Tara J. Mui, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Kung Tai Bay, Republic of Korea Navy. Commander Douglas John Munns, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ho Sup Park, Republic of Korea Navy. Colonel Timothy F. O'Brien, United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Al Rafi, Kuwait Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Patrick J. O'Rourke, United States Air Force. Lieutenant 
Colonel Omar Adakil, Kuwait Navy. Mr. Cr Christopher J. Panico, Department of State, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Adele Alfarhan, Kuwait Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel John J. Perkins, United States Army, National Guard. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Far Faras Al Sufriya, Kuwait <laughs> Army. Commander, <laughs> Commander Joseph Edward F. Piance, Medical Service Corps. Lieutenant Commander Celsus Grasmanis, Latvian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Ross T. Poppenberger, United States Army. <laughs> Commander Mazen Basbus, Lebanese Navy. <laughs> Commander James Pressler, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Zilvinus Svetlauskas, Lithuanian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Derek Duane Price, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Nasrul Rahman, Royal Malaysian Navy. <laughs> Commander David P. Rasmussen, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Ahmed Mayalud, Mauritanian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Brian, Brian Todd Rideout, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Raul Lepe, Mexican Navy. Mr. Troy Roberts, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Commander Zorin Zemarjik, Montenegrin Navy. Commander Del Me M. Robinson, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Hisham El Amri, Royal Moroccan Navy. Colonel Kevin M. Russell, United States Army, with distinction. Major Fahid Haji, Royal Gendarmerie of Morocco. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Matthew R. Sale, United States Marine Corps. Major Rashid Ramoon, Royal Moroccan Army. <laughs> Colonel Jar George R. Schatzer, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Edward Iaji, Nigerian Navy. Colonel Philip E. Sheridan, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Solomon Jaja, Nigerian Navy. <laughs> Commander David Adam Schuster, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Gabby Mohammed, Nigerian Navy. <laughs> Colonel Dale K. Slade, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Stanley Uma, Nigerian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Stuart C. Smith, Jr., United States Marine Corps Reserve. Commander Tommy Bakahag, Royal Norwegian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Terrence Summers, United States Army Reserve. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Ali Al Habsi, Royal Navy of Oman. Lieutenant Colonel Damian Lazarus Spooner, United States Marine Corps, with high distinction. That was quite last week. Lieutenant Commander Salim Awashawi, Royal Navy of Oman. Miss Jacqueline Sarah Tame, Defense Intelligence Agency, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Kiamot Khan, Pakistan Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Corey M. Teachma, United States Army. Major Fidel Castro, Peruvian Air Force. <laughs> Commander Ricardo A. Trevino, United States Navy. That's, a, that's hard to beat. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Wendell Buntog, Philippine Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel June H. Om, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Jagers Marzalik, Polish Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel James W. Wall, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Dece Chubanitsa, Romanian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Walls, United States Air Force. <laughs> Captain Michal Monajem, 
Sao Tome and Principe Armed Forces. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Walton, Sr., United States Army Reserve. Commander Abdul Musin, Al Khazir, Royal Saudi Navy. <laughs> Mr. David J. Wellington, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Major Nasser Abugami, Royal Saudi Air Force. Mr. Michael K. West, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Bander Alotaibi, Royal Saudi Army. <laughs> Colonel Randy E. White, United States Army, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Bamba Guye, Senegalese Navy. <laughs> Commander Anthony W. Williams, United States Coast Guard. Major Edwin Chen, Republic of Singapore Navy. Colonel Richard H. Zampelli, United States Army, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Juan Belizan, Spanish Navy. From the College of Naval Command and Staff, Lieutenant Commander Nathan Allen, United States Coast Guard. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Matthias Johnson, Royal Swedish Navy. Major Jeremy W. Ali, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Ho Lu Hong, Taiwan Navy. Major Blakely M. Anderson, United States Army. Major Tenje Matenje, Tanzania People's Defense Force. Miss Nicole B. Appleman, Defense Intelligence Agency. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Tena Koku, Tolaganese. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Reuben James Ada, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Mashed Abidi, Tunisian Navy. <laughs> Mr. Sidney M. Austin IV, Federal Bureau of in Investigation. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Mateen Sitak, Turkish Navy. <laughs> Major Leonard J. Bacalarts III, United States Army, <laughs> with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Troy Dickey, United States Navy. <laughs> Mr. Charles Webster Ballou, Department of Energy. Major Thomas Duff, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Charles L. Banks, Jr., United States Coast Guard. <laughs> Lieutenant hey, Commander I'm Colin Kornick, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Badiola Buran, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Benjamin Newhart, United States Navy. <laughs> Mr. Nathan P. Bowers, Department of State. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Han Tang, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Stanley J. Bennis, United States Navy. Major Andrew Yakulis, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Christopher John Bradshaw, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Hai Tan Wen, Vietnamese Navy. <laughs> Major Michael D. Brimage, United States Army. From the College of Naval Warfare, Lieutenant Colonel David R. Anderson, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Andrew D. Brown, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Shane A. Donahue, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Major W. Russell Brown, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel James L. Donaldson, Jr., United States Air Force. Major Matthew Patrick Berniston, United States Air Force. Mr. James Werner Forbes, Defense Leadership Development Program. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander James E. Caballero, Medical Service Corps. Miss Gabrielle Guimon, Department of State, graduating with distinction. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Edward Caligari, Department of State. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel David A. Hammerschmidt, United States Air Force. Major Paul M. Carroll, United States Army. Mr. Richard L. Hewitt, Special Operations Command. 
Lieutenant Commander Lorian D. Cassidy, United States Navy. Colonel Brian A. Hinsvark, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Major Kenneth Hank Chilcote, United States Air Force. Commander Eric Clayton Isaacson, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ruben D. Kona, United States Navy. Mr. Leonard J. Larraway, Defense Contract Management Agency. Major Nathaniel S. Sincala, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey E. Lowmiller, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Major S Scott M. McClendaniel, Daniel, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Mr. Lee McTaggart, Department of State. Major Natalie Nicole Colton, United States Army. Commander Thomas C. Remmers, United States Coast Guard. Major Andrew Linwood Cook, United States Air Force. Hey, Leo. Colonel Jacob Trigler, United States Air Force. Major Leon Anderson Cook, United States Army. Colonel Michael York, United States Army. Major Robert J. Covington, United States Army. Lieutenant Matthew Allen, United States Navy. Lieutenant Shannon Michael Daniels, United States Navy, Supply Corps. Lieutenant Commander Matthew S. Baker, United States Coast Guard. Mr. Peter, Peter F. Deepa, Special Operations Command. Heather Bacon Schoen, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Damian Andrew Dillon Dodge, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander John J. Batiste, Jr., JAG Corps, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Major Brian R. Dunker, United States Army Reserve, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Paul J. Colwell, United States Navy. Major Nicholas S. Edwards, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Joshua J. Cowart, United States Navy. Lieutenant Sarah L. Eggleston, United States Navy. Lieutenant Haraz N. Gunbari, United States Navy Reserve, graduating with distinction. Major Scott E. Elwell, United States Army. Mr. Joseph A. Gibbs, Army National Guard. Major D. Max Ferguson, United States Army, graduating with highest distinction. Commander John E. Hudson, United States Navy. Ms. Melinda Ann Field, Defense Intelligence Agency. Lieutenant Patrick D. Hines, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Daniel S. Fisher, United States Navy. Lieutenant Joshua C. Katz, Dental Corps, United States Navy, graduating with highest distinction. Major Sean P. Fitzgerald, United States Army. Lieutenant Eric J. Lovelace, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Kelly John Fitzpatrick, United States Navy. Lieutenant Jimmy J. Pavelka, United States Navy. Mr. Antonio L. Flores, Department of Homeland Security. Commander Kathleen A. Powell, United States Navy Reserve, graduating with distinction. Major Jeffrey Daniel Foster, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Cindy T. Rose, United States Navy. Major Derek R. Frank, Jr., United States Air Force, graduating with highest distinction. Lieutenant Kevin J. Russo, United States Coast Guard Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Daniel Everardo Frias, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Dagoberto Salinas, Jr., Nurse Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander David A. Garrett, United States Navy. <coughs> Commander Diana Sanchez, Medical Corps, United States Navy. 
Major John P. Gassman, United States Army, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant David K. Tuil, United States Navy. Major Clinton Gebke, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Paul A. Volker, Army National Guard. Major Russell Harold Giesling, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Anthony J. Wakefield, United States Navy. Commander Ryan M. Gormley, United States Navy. Ms. Stormy Yeager, National Security Agency, Fort Meade, Maryland. Major Brian R. Grant, United States Marine Corps. Ms. Rael M. Ammon, Department of State, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander John M. Griffith, United States Navy. Mr. David P. Bollure, United States Secret Service, Orlando, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Ellen H. Grimes, United States Navy. Commander Judy L. Bernacki, United States Navy Reserve. Ms. Ashley C. Grounds, Department of State. Ms. Jean Brown, Federal Executive Board, Chicago, Illinois. Lieutenant Commander David Manuel Gutierrez, United States Navy. Lieutenant Veronica A. Camiolo, United States Navy. Major Sean Hall, United States Air Force. Commander Isel Caro, United States Navy Reserve. Major David L. Hamlin, United States Army. Captain Joseph R. Champagne, United States Navy Reserve Component. Lieutenant Nathan T. Hayward, United States Navy Supply Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Joshua A. Cohen, United States Navy. <clears throat> Lieutenant Commander John Everett Dooley Hedrick, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Bartholomew W. Connolly, United States Navy. Ms. Jacqueline Elizabeth Heller, Central Intelligence Agency. Mr. Josh Considine, Naval Air Warfare Center, Patuxent River, Maryland. Lieutenant Edward William Herbert IV, United States Navy, Supply Corps. Lieutenant Rebecca M. Contivac, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander David P. Hicks, United States Navy. Mr. William B. Cook, Department of Homeland Security, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Major Chad Eric Highfill, United States Army, graduating with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Leslie R. Counselor, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Major Brendan J. Hochstein, United States Air Force, graduating with high distinction. Lieutenant Commander Michael F. D'Angelo, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Stephen Aiden Holland, United States Navy Supply Corps. Mr. Anthony C. DeFelice, Department of Homeland Security, Washington, D.C. Major Benjamin Joshua Horner, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Naaman R. Dimitrov, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander William T. Hubner, Jr., United States Navy. Mr. Curtis J. Dunn, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia, graduating with distinction. Major Jason A. Vizdak, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Thomas L. Eaton, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major Sean R. Jokinen, United States Army. Lieutenant Brian E. Field, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Andrew Thomas Jones, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander David C. Fletcher, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Dr. Willie Erica Jordan, Defense Contract Management Agency. Lieutenant Peter C. Forbes, United States Navy. Major Kenneth Jewell, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Ricardo E. Foster, United States Navy. 
Major Molly E. Keith, United States Army National Guard. Lieutenant Desiree E. Frame, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Major John Garside Kennedy, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Neva R. Fuentes, Nurse Corps, United States Navy. Major Jason D. Kerbs, United States Air Force. Dr. Gordon J. Gaddy, United States Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Joshua Daniel Corey, United States Navy, graduating with high distinction. Mr. Eric J. Goldman, Customs and Border Protection, Washington, D.C. Major Mark E. Kimball, United States Air Force. Commander Brian K. Hamill, United States Navy. Major Bernard R. King, United States Air Force. Mr. Yannick G. Hammond, Naval Sea Systems Command, Washington, D.C. Major Joseph A. Kenothi, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Captain Robert J. Hawkins, Nurse Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Matthew R. Kolodika, United States Coast Guard. Commander Jacqueline F. Heff, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Scott M. Consum, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Mr. Nicholas R. Hewn, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, Arlington, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Frank C. Kovacs, United States Navy. Lieutenant Michael Holney, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Dustin Thomas Kramer, United States Navy. Ms. Catherine A. Hughes, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Dallas, Texas, graduating with highest distinction. Major Shelley R. Kurtz, United States Marine Corps. Mr. Alfred Cut. L. Iannacone, Jr., I'm, so, I'm sorry, Senior, Personnel Support Detachment, Mayport, Florida. Major Jason Michael Cutt, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Monica Iannacone, United <laughs> States Navy Reserve. Major Daniel P. Loxo, United States Army. Lieutenant Nicholas J. Yeager, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Sean A. Lansing, United States Coast Guard, graduated with high distinction. Sure Lieutenant Zachary P. Jones, United States Navy Reserve. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Chester Lee, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Jennifer Kearns, United States Navy Reserve. Major Joshua O. Lehman, United States Army, graduating with high distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Scott J. Keenan, United States Navy Reserve. Major Christopher Carneal Lewis, United States Army Reserve. <laughs> Mr. Robert F. Kenny, Military Sealift Command, Norfolk, Virginia. Major Kimberly J. Light, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander David D. Kim, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Michael E. Lofgren, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander James H. Kirby, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major Christopher R. Lossing, United States Army. Captain Brian A. Kerbitz, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander John J. Lowry, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander George R. Lawton, United States Navy Reserve. Major Paul A. Lushenko, United States Army, graduated with high distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Charles H. Lewis, United States Navy. Mr. Stephen E. Lina, Department of State. Captain Cheryl A. Locke, United States Navy. Lieutenant Douglas M. Marks, United States Navy. 
Mr. Michael V. Manzor II, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Christopher R. Marslinder, United States Air Force, graduated with distinction. Mr. Todd A. Marr, Department of Commerce, Dallas, Texas. Major Richard Marcellet, United States Army, National Guard. Ms. Michelle M. McDuffie, Department of Defense, Baltimore, Maryland. Lieutenant Commander Justin Muteku, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Michael S. McGrail, United States Coast Guard. Major Frederick Maul, United States Army. Lieutenant Edward J. McGinnis II, United States Navy. Major Michelle S. McCarroll, United States Army, graduating with distinction. Mr. Tobin J. McMurdy, Government Accountability Office, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Major Thomas J. McCarthy, Jr., United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Kathleen T. Meisner, United States Navy Reserve, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Kevin Lewis McCarty, United States Navy. Ms. Aaron E. Miller, Naval Sea Systems Command, Washington, D.C. Major Rob T. McDonald, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Craig M. Minitor, United States Navy. Major Elizabeth A. McEwen, United States Marine Corps, graduating with distinction. Commander Kerry D. Moore, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Alexander Michael McMahon, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Francis J. Moores, Jr., United States Navy Reserve. Major Jeffrey Minders, United States Army. <laughs> There's a lot of names. Lieutenant Matthew G. Packard, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Michelle V. Melvin, United States Navy. Myers. Lieutenant Colonel Edward R. Palacios, United States Army Reserve. Major John A. Meyer, United States Army, graduating with distinction. Major Diana J. Parzik, United States Army Reserves. Major Ryan R. Middlemas, United States Army, graduating with highest distinction. Ms. Lacey A. Pate, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Corey L. Millis, United States Navy. Lieutenant Nathan D. Patterson, Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Joseph R. Mills, United States Navy. Mr. Justin W. Prosser, United States House of Representatives, yes. Washington, D.C. Monis, got it. Major Kent B. Monis, United States Army. Mr. Jeffrey D. Pugmire. Marine Corps Intelligence Activity, Quantico, Virginia. Major Keith M. Montgomery, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Mr. Oliver Queen, Jr., Department of the Interior, Herndon, Virginia. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Jennifer Joe Mueller, United States Navy, Medical Service Corps. Lieutenant Commander Michael J. Quigley, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Eric Newsom, United States Navy Supply Corps. Lieutenant Commander Seth A. Rainey, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Major Seth A. Nicholson, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Joseph P. Rosado, United States Navy. Major Mark Nostro, United States Marine Corps, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Thelmar A. Rosarda, United States Navy. 
Lieutenant Commander Todd O'Connell, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Carly Scheimreif, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Douglas W. Oldham, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander J. Ryan Rose, United States Navy Reserve. Major Reuben A. Otario, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Lubov F. Russell, United States Navy. Major Dylan R. Patterson, Air National Guard, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Randall M. Schrock, United States Navy Reserve. <clears throat> Lieutenant Commander Richard W. Payne, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jason J. Scholes, United States Navy Reserve. Major Chad A. Peltier, United States Army, graduating with distinction. Ms. Kira K. Self, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C., graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander William Rush Phillips, United States Navy. Hey, how are you doing? Ms. Lauren E. Stockwell, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Ronald Mantia Peramidi, United States Navy. Go ahead. Lieutenant Lindsey A. Stoyle, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Major Thomas C. Plant, United States Army. Ms. Lauren A. Streets, Marine Forces Cyberspace Command, Fort Meade, Maryland, graduating with distinction. Major Michael A. Porges, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Elizabeth A. Stroud, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Bradley T. Quillen, United States Marshal Service, graduating with distinction. Mr. John E. Thompson III, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Lachelle D. Rapolini, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Joseph A. Towns, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Gary Allen Redman, Jr., United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Mark A. Venzor, United States Navy. Major Jonathan M. Ringline, United States Marine Corps. Ms. Jennifer L. Wall, Joint Chiefs of Staff, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Justin L. Scarborough, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Christopher E. Ware, United States Navy. Major Eric J. Schmitz, United States Army. Ms. Deborah G. Wilson, Department of Justice, Glendale, California. Major Seth Swessinger, United States Air Force. Mr. Timothy R. Wolverton. United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Mr. Charles E. Shannon, Department of State. Thanks, Thanks, Lieutenant Timothy Wyma, United States Navy. Major James Siebert, United States Army. Mr. Jason E. Wright, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Quantico, Virginia. Graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander David A. Sigler, United States Navy. Mr. Charles C. Ziegler IV, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Gregory L. Seiler, United States Navy. Okay, got it. Major Carly Marie Sims, United States Air Force. 
Major William R. Seitz, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Joshua D. Smith, United States Navy. Major Joshua A. Sperling, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Michael B. Stanfield, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Sean M. Stewart, United States Navy, graduating with distinction. Major Adam L. Talafaro, United States Army, graduating with distinction. Major Matthew M. Tarazon, United States Army. Major Scott Allen Taylor, United States Air Force. Mr. John M. Thomas, graduating with distinction. Major Brandon Thornton, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Major Matthew A. Turcott, United States Army. Lieutenant Jeremy C. Van Gelder, United States Navy. Mr. Mark A. Wayne, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Major James Randall Vance, United States Army, graduated with highest distinction. Major Nathan Farrington Welty, United States Air Force, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Drew J. Whitting, United States Navy. Major Nathan A. Williams, United States Air Force. Major Daniel C. Willis, United States Air Force. And last but not least, Major Matthew Ryan Wimmer, United States Army. That's a whole lot of names. Okay, uh, Admiral Howe, please move the podium, sir. So I can sense the crowds drawing a little bit antsy. I think recess is due. <laughs> so it is my honor to, to close these proceedings with just a, a few additional comments. First, to the Naval War College faculty and the staff. Today, we again witness the results of your efforts. For 132 years, you and your predecessors, you've labored to develop and educate our navies and our nation's leaders. And once again, you've succeeded, producing another cohort of leaders that are very well prepared to lead in the increasingly complex and dynamic, challenging security environment we face. Thank you for your dedicated efforts. To the families and the colleagues gathered here, thanks for joining us. Your presence not only makes this ceremony more memorable for the student graduating today, but it gives us the opportunity to recognize your role in what we're celebrating. We in the military, we recognize that life in the military, it is a team sport. Your love, your encouragement, and your devotion it helped our students maintain the proper balance between mind and body and spirit during this intellectual journey here in Newport. Thank you for your support. And now to the graduates. Congratulations on completing your course of study here at the Naval War College. As you all get ready to head back to the operational forces and reflect upon your time here at Newport, I'd ask you to keep three things in mind. 
Three things. The gift that you've been given, the responsibility that you have inherited as a result, and the profession in which you serve. So this year of in-residence education is truly a gift from the nation to you. As you continue to grow in rank and responsibility, you'll come to find that there is no more precious a commodity than time. And you've just been given the gift of a year of study, of reflection, and debate. A gift of time to grow intellectually and to prepare for the challenges that await. Do not take this gift for granted. And I'd offer the best way to ensure that you don't take this gift for granted is to consciously acknowledge the responsibility that you've inherited. And that is to critically and thoughtfully employ this education as you move forward. You are all headed back into the, the real world, the world of present shock. The world where your strategic horizon is going to get shrinked from year, decades and years to months, days, weeks, maybe even minutes, depending on the job you're in. And your daily agenda is going to be set by the headlines of the day or perhaps the urgent emails in your inbox. So as you come to face to face with that, the reality of that world, you've got a responsibility to remain a strategically minded critical thinker, to proactively lead with independent, creative thought. Do not allow yourself to get lazy. Do not just simply get into those jobs and reactively survive with comfortable, conventional wisdom. Reflect, think, and lead. And as part of that responsibility, I'd ask that as you move forward into those next assignments, that you pay it forward with a very deliberate focus on developing the leaders that are in your charge. With this educational experience, you have much to offer them. You have much to offer the young leaders across the fleet, the operating forces, and our department. Don't just wait for opportunities to impact their development. Actively seek out those opportunities to engage with them, to share with them your thoughts and your experiences and your perspectives. Help shape their habits of mind, their thinking skills, and their leadership potential. We will be a better military if you do so. And finally, as you depart today, I'd ask you to keep in mind the profession in which you serve, the profession of arms. Never forget the trust that the nation places in you. Never forget your obligation to uphold that trust. Never forget the professional ethic that guides your actions every day at home, in garrison, in the field and underway. Continue to grow as a steward of our profession. This will be my last graduation ceremony as president of the Naval War College. It has been a privilege and an honor to be part of this incredible team. Good luck, Godspeed, and I wish you the traditional fair winds and following seas. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now singing together the service songs of our nation's armed forces. The words for each song can be, find, can be found at the back of your programs. We ask that each military and civilian service member, veterans, and family members please stand as their service song is sung. Please remain standing until the completion of all service songs. Will Captain Andrew Norris, Senior Coast Guard Advisor, and all Coast Guard veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise.
I'm a Paul Muller, Senior Marine Corps Advisor, and all the Marine Corps veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise.
Party and Dignitaries.